Children's Past. Awesome. So today awesome. I am here with Ethan Brooks. Ethan is the Children's Pastor at Grace Church of Chapel Hill. Excited to chat today, Ethan. Excited to chat with you, Chris. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm curious, could you tell me like a bit about uh, your backstory? Like what called you into ministry and how did you find your way to Grace Church? Sure. So I started attending Grace uh, back when I was in college. So mm -hmm. uh, coming up on about 15 years ago, uh, I was in undergrad in pharmacy school and, you know, I uh, developed some friendships with a campus ministry uh, who went here and just started experiencing life here, uh, you know, as I was figuring out what I was going to do and how I was going to do that. So um, even when I you know, started working as a pharmacist. Um, I was drawn to volunteering in the children's ministry, connecting with kids, getting to kind of play that important role uh, in their life of showing them who God was and how they uh, mattered to him, how they could connect with him. Uh, the long story short is uh, I realized that I got more excited about helping kids and helping other, you know, team members like myself discover their calling and passion and realized I cared more about that than I did about being a pharmacist. And uh, uh, in 2018, um, you know, I, I, I had been leading small teams and working with kids uh, all this time. Mm. And uh, the, the leaders here were pouring into me, developing me. So in 2018, they uh, offered me a full-time position and I switched careers and uh, never looked back. Yeah, awesome. Well, that is, you know, a really special, really God like saying, hey, look, you know, you're excited about this. Um, but that can be hard, even if you are very excited about, you know, serving in kids ministry, because you, you've invested so much into uh, maybe another career. So what, um, what advice would you have for someone that is maybe feeling more energized when they're serving in kids ministry, but they've got another career. Maybe they think that other career is, you know, more responsible for them to stick with. Like what, what advice would you give someone at those crossroads? Absolutely. You know, the, the, the calling to ministry in whether, whether it's full time, whether it's, you know, as a, as a side gig or volunteer, it's mm -hmm. that calling is direct from God. And, you know, uh, I would say follow what you're hearing from God, what other people are speaking into your life. You know, there I I mean I know tons of people that their their calling is in the business place, in the marketplace, but they're what they're doing on the weekends or however they're serving, like that is fulfilling and that's important. So not everybody has to follow a full-time switch. That being said, I I felt like that every everywhere I looked, that confirmation was uh, to switch. So um, I would say whatever brings you joy and however works for you and your your family situation, your situation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because there, there are a lot of ways to serve. And, you know, speaking of serving on the, the flip side. So now as you are you know leading a kids ministry, even recruiting volunteers is always one of everyone's uh, top priority. So what are some uh, ways you found work really well to recruit volunteers at Grace? Yeah. So I like to invite uh, team members into something that they, they could see themselves enjoying. I never mm -hmm. lead with, uh, you know, ooh, we, we're, we're, we're desperate for infant workers this week or anything like that. It's uh, nobody wants to join the sinking ship, but letting them know that not only are they giving back into another group that they get to serve and add value, but we grow as we serve others. So whether it's, mm -hmm. you know, looking for people holding babies to directly, you know, discipling kids that are old enough to discuss to security team. I mean, it doesn't matter what the role is. I want people to see themselves growing as they are pouring into others. So that's kind of an overall philosophy of how I recruit and how I build my teams. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I really like that. I've written that one down. Hey, we grow as we serve others. Um, you know, I'm curious, is that like, what are some other mantras and values you and your team operate by? Yeah, so the, you know, uh, the core values of Grace Church as a whole, you know, kind of pour down into each area. So um, mm -hmm. One of them is uh, enjoying God in that, you know, from us as a team members to the kids that we're serving, we get to enjoy uh, who God is and how we connect with him. So it's like 
what that means at a kid's level. Like, it's okay to have fun in church. It's okay to have fun learning who God is and enjoying him. Uh, if we're not enjoying our role, then, you know, uh, we can, th there is a way for us to find joy in how we're serving others or whatever it is we're doing. So that enjoying God philosophy is just really important to every area of our children's ministry. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I really like that because, uh, you know, it's like, Hey, if uh, kids aren't enjoying learning who God is learning about their relationship with God, it's, um, a lot harder to retain them as they, as they grow up and then look for churches with their families as mm -hmm. adults. So, uh, yeah, that's very, very important. And, you know, I'm curious, like when it comes to making experiences in church and at home, like what, uh, just some things you I found work really well for making those engaging experiences where kids can enjoy learning who God is. Yeah. So the, you know, the, the recipes is not new. It's, you know, the, there, there's worship, there's ways of making the, the Bible story come to life. There's that personal connection, however it is we're getting it. Um, mm -hmm. And you, but, but taking all of those and just asking the questions of, what is timeless? What is, you know, that this is the Bible, this is truth that never changes, but what is it that speaks a language that kids understand? And figuring out a way to meld the two, the two together. Um, yeah. You know, we, we, we're not looking to reinvent things, but it's recognizing why the kids enjoy going to sporting events or their favorite restaurant or watching their favorite show and finding ways to make that accessible. Um, what if they got as excited or more excited about the God who created them and loves them as they do whatever whatever YouTube channels they're enjoying? So it's finding ways to to meld those two and um, make that exciting for kids. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I really like that. And what's like what's maybe like a like actual example from something yeah. you've done recently that kind of plays into that? Yeah, sure. So um so we have a Thursday service. It's much smaller than our Sunday mm -hmm. services. And we were finding because it was smaller, it was harder to get the kids as engaged, you know, mm -hmm. where they would normally walk into a small group and, you know, doing a, a game or an activity with their small group leaders. So we thought, all right, something about this, the environment's different. So just a little change up of, all right, instead of going to, you know, a, a much smaller area to get started, we're going to open up uh, Thursday nights, kids going straight to large group. We, 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 we got a basketball goal. Uh, we got some foosball tables with, that the youth was using, but we moved where they were and mm -hmm. just created some fun elements, changed the lighting so that when kids walk in, wow, they're getting something more special on Thursday nights where you can tell we're trying to grow it. They're getting something special here and getting to be a part of something special that on Sundays, it just fits to walk into a classroom, but I want them excited on, you know, like with my own kids, uh, it's not, oh, we have to go to church on Thursdays. It's, wow, it's Thursdays. We get to go to church today because they know when they walk in, they're going to have fun. That's an example of something we did recently. Um, the, the, the Bible story didn't change. The small group activity didn't change. But the way we wrapped it up changed to, you know, make make it exciting for kids. Oh, yeah. Well, I really like that. It's like, hey, you know, when it's, hey, we we get to go to church on Thursday, you know, that mm -hmm. is, uh, shows you are doing something right there. So that is awesome. And like that idea. So, uh, yeah, to, it's always, always good to, uh, especially if we can, you know, hey, just these groups using these, well, we're gonna just move those over here tonight. So, yeah, really dig that. And, you know, I'm curious, uh, it takes a lot to drive these changes, to do these things in kids' ministry. Like, what are some uh, of your biggest, like, challenges you face and how do you overcome those? Hmm. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's, you were talking earlier about getting team members, recruiting, how you pitch that. I find mm -hmm. that for, you know, a healthy, vibrant church, the growth of people coming in always slightly outpaces the the growth of the maturity to where people want to serve. So people come to a church and, you know, a year or more before they're like, oh yeah, I can give back. I can jump in. So it's finding ways to, you know, keep the, hey, we, we have a, a personal connection with a small group leader, small ratios, but when you don't have the team size that it would, you would need to do that well or safely, it's finding creative ways to always go after people. So I don't want to sound cliche of like, oh, we need people, we need people, but it's 
going back to what I said about finding ways to make this appealing, make this attractive to people who don't traditionally serve with kids. Um, am I answering your question so far? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, maybe a, a creative solution might be like, hey, I have women who serve in my children's ministry team, but let's find roles that their husbands are coming. They're just hanging out. Like that's where we, cre you know, really revamped our security team security team and made it accessible to men who wanted to serve, but maybe not with kids. Um, and that just kind of rose the bar for what we were doing and, and other creative ideas to get um, teenagers involved earlier than they would normally, or, you know, I think things along those lines. Um, oh, yeah. We're also building, you know, um, part of why we're using Playlister is um, making content accessible to our brand new campus. We, we're launching a, a, a new campus and recruiting for that has, you know, been a, a recent challenge and, and not just getting bodies in rooms, but maintaining the DNA and culture of who we are across two locations. So, uh, it's exciting. Church is growing, but it's, you know, it's a challenge to overcome and, and, and keep the team vibrant and healthy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I definitely see how, hey, you know, how can we keep our culture the same as we launch a, you know, the same church, but it is another, another location. So how do we keep the culture the same? Like, aside from, uh, you know, it seems like there are a lot of then short-term and long-term goals on the horizon for you and the Grace Church team. So, like, what are some of those uh, both goals here in the short term and then things on the horizon for this year? Yeah, sure. So, um, short-term goals, things I'm focusing on are... Uh, developing leaders within my team as we as we get people trained up ready of course we send out the best ones and then we're always backfilling and re you know looking at who's on the pipeline for growth so um mm -hmm. i this year i i have a goal i have six new team leaders that i want to uh you know they're out there and i'm getting them trained uh identified recruited and trained uh so that you know we're we'll be ready for whatever god has next um, and also making sure that the new campus is healthy and that we are giving kids there an, an exciting experience. A um, little different when you walk into a, a high school history classroom, but we're convincing them, no, this is this is what you were used to in that other building. You, the, the, all, all the same elements are there. Um, long term, I mean, we, are we are we talking one year, five year, ten year? Up to you. <laughs> Yeah. So as, as a church, we are looking, you know, our first campus, we're looking for multiple um, over a 10 year period. We're hoping to, uh, we feel like God is calling us to reach other areas in our region. So it's kind of mm -hmm. practically what would it look like to get there where there are four or five campuses, but the deeper level is, okay, how am I identifying leaders? How am I recruiting? How am I keeping my role on the forefront as you know um as the primary children's pastor so um yeah always focusing on growth and development and uh, keeping what we're doing it's not about the numbers unless you remember that each number is a kid that's you know growing closer to god so in that sense we are growing in a healthy way um yeah those are those are some things on my uh on my heart right now Awesome. Well, that is great. And we are rooting for you. You know, we're super excited to be uh, partnered with you all as you launch your new campus. And uh, yeah, so really appreciated you sharing so much today, Ethan. And I'm curious, you know, what other just advice would you want to share with ministry leaders? Yeah. Um, let me think for a moment. So, you know, the past three, four years, there there have been challenges all over and we've had to adapt and we've had to adjust. But you know, it's easy sometimes to get stuck in a rut of, you know, the, these are the challenges we have and we can't, we can't overcome them or this is just the way we do things and we're stuck. And I would say um, being okay with asking for help, finding other people that are doing it better, asking, growing and, and finding ways to improve. Um, like it's okay to do that just like any other field or any other area that we have. And, and two is that, you know, what, what we do matters and keeping that in front of us can overcome some of the pitfalls and challenges we have. Um, you know, we, we have a phrase here of um, uh, keeping the win in front of us. So 
always like the, the win, the, you know, not, we, we get focused on our losses or our challenges, but always remembering what it is. You know, I, I have a wall in my office of letters that, you know, whether it's kids have written or testimonies from parents, pictures that get drawn, just th these are the kids we're reaching every single week. Uh, most mm -hmm. of them aren't even mine. They're, you know, you know, Mr. Don in the kindergarten room. And when somebody mentions that, I write it down with a, wow, what we are doing matters. And uh, I try to keep that in front of my team and remind them of their wins. So um, yeah, I hope that helps. Absolutely. Always important to be reminded of those wins. So yeah, we'll appreciate you so much for sharing so much, Ethan, and we're excited for what's ahead. Fantastic. I'm really glad that uh, you had me, Chris, and 